so now that juga leong is in rise of kingdoms let's talk about power creep shall we what's going on guys cheers so the other day i made a video where we kind of went over a bunch of pre-release battle reports just testing juga leong with Boudica prime and putting it up against what is arguably the best open field march in the game right now which is nevsky with joan of arc prime and i do want to give you guys a quick update to that video okay the fourth skill on juga leong is only able to be activated and removed by himself so this is a little bit different than how the battle simulator was programmed when i tested it first since that video the developer has gone in and changed it so that way it's functioning the way that it works in game and he is still defeating nevsky and joan of arc prime in every single duel i've done over 20 duels with different skill trees and they have a 100 win rate with about 35 to 36 Six thousand troops remaining that's probably because they're dueling and Boudica prime is healing so of course they're gonna have an edge but of course cavalry is supposed to beat archers that's the whole like rock paper scissor thing and yet here we are we have an archer that can consistently defeat his so-called counter and I want to talk about power creep okay because one of the comments and I think multiple people mentioned this and that was oh my god I just finished uh, uh, working on my Nevsky with Joan and you're telling me that there is a better pairing out there how am I ever going to keep up now let me just say that Nevsky Joan is going to be a very meta viable March for the foreseeable future I think for the next like year and a half at least you can continue to use Nevsky with Joan and you will probably be just fine okay so don't feel like you wasted your sculptures you didn't this is still an insane March in the open field and just because Boudica with Juga Leong is beating it in a 1v1 simulator that doesn't mean really anything I mean the calves are literally faster in the open field right like so there's a lot of it there's a lot of nuance that wasn't in that video so don't worry about that but I do think that this is an appropriate time to talk about power creep okay because one of the things that I mentioned in a video and I'm not going to go into super detail here but if you look at some of the more recent season of conquest commanders if you click on them you'll see that there is a golden shine that goes across their body this is not present for all legendary commanders okay even with Guan Yu for example that little golden shine does not occur it only occurs with some of the more recent legendary commanders in the game obviously Bobber is one of them Trajan is not but Tarek in fact actually is so a lot of these newer season of conquest commanders do shine gold and I think that's an indicator of power level okay that's just that's my assumption Lilith hasn't really addressed this at all it could just be a design choice but it seems to me like it's it's a pretty clear distinction because the first commander in the game to do this I believe was Nevsky so like I mean Nevsky is basically he, he marked a new level of power in the game and if you look at Juga Leong and you click on him he actually doesn't shine gold he shines a sort of platinum he shines a sort of I mean you could call it silver you could call it like a diamond coating even it's like a pearlescent you see that glow that goes across him and this is the first commander that's ever done this in rise of kingdoms and I think that this lends to my theory of the different shine colors potentially indicating a new level of power in the game now again this could just be a design choice but I don't think that it is because when Nevsky came into the game he was pretty clearly much more powerful than the other commanders and now that we have Juga Leong he's kind of in that same boat yet even more powerful than Nevsky so what exactly is power creep because I think that's what these these shines these glistens are really referring to here I think that's an indication of a higher power power creep is when developers add new content to a game whether it's a trading card game and they release new cards or it's a, a game like world of warcraft where they release a new expansion and the new items in that game are more powerful than the existing stuff okay that's called power creep and this exists in movies this exists in anime and manga and everything as we progress through the game the commanders that we get access to are more and more powerful and it's not even just commanders it's also like systems in the game right before we had just commanders then they added the equipment system and then they went ahead and added the armament system right so there's even more systems in the game now as well that lend to a higher power of the late game content but this isn't really just a bad thing okay and we are going to talk about the bad in fact 
we're going to talk about the good the bad and the ugly of power creep here in this video as it pertains to rise of kingdoms because i think it's a really interesting topic so let's first talk about the good things about power creep because i think a lot of times when people talk about power creep they talk about it in a negative light it has sort of a negative connotation so let's just get one thing out of the way okay there are some good things about power creep one of those is new toys okay uh, if developers are going to continue to release new things into the game and keep them fresh and exciting then there has to be something new about them and you can only go so far when it comes to reworking and retweaking the same mechanics the same skills the same buffs and they have to add something new eventually and a lot of times they're going to add something that's maybe slightly better than what already exists and that's exciting and having new toys to play with and new things to build is fun for a game i can't tell you how excited i was last night when we were playing uh fighting in king's land and i was able to quickly reboot my game because it was reset spin the wheel dump a bunch of heads into juga leong and start to use them on the battlefield in king's land it was really cool and you, as you can see here i didn't expertise him because i do plan on spinning a bunch of the the wheels but i still need over 200 sculptures so i think i'll i'll be fine i'll be able to get a lot of value out of the wheels anyway and then i was able to come into lost canyon and put him on my defense here with my e song yay and i was able to test this out today and see how he functions in this game mode and so far he's working he's doing pretty good he, he's actually doing pretty good here so I'm happy about that so getting your hands on new and more powerful commanders is just fun it's fun and exciting and it keeps things fresh but it's also a way to sort of reward players for planning their account properly and saving things hoarding resources and making logical investments into their account I think that's very satisfying and rewarding for a lot of players myself included and I mean full disclosure I still have almost 800 sculptures saved up here right because I sort of know how these things work and I think that including power creep into the game and having players understand that is one way that you can sort of differentiate a really good player from a really bad player right really bad players maybe they don't have the foresight to save or plan or do anything like that and if you're a good player who understands how the game works then you can use power creep to your advantage and save those resources and outperform other players simply by making sure that you're only ever doing uh, the right things and only ever investing in the best things and I think that's very rewarding for players and players like to feel like they have some sort of control over the progression of their account now sometimes power creep systems take it way overboard and we're going to talk about that later in the bad or ugly section but in general players who understand games like rise of kingdoms can perform really well because of their understanding of this and finally another thing that's really good about power creep is this sort of gives the developers uh some reins as to controlling how long fights or battles will actually take so for example Zenobia has been a sort of garrison meta for a long time and I know right now there's a lot of different garrisons that are very viable uh, but when she first came into the game she was almost unbeatable she was kind of like uncrackable if you had her with uh Isun Sin right and another great example of that was Attila with Takeda when they first came into the game this rally fundamentally changed how the game functioned I mean this game this rally pretty much broke the game when they first put it, put it in and this is this kind of gives the developers a way to decide okay do we want right now do we want the content to focus more on rallies do we want a more rally heavy meta or do we want a more garrison heavy meta right and they can look at the data and they can say okay well in kvk rallies are lasting longer than we like players are getting bored they're, they're getting burnt out they're logging off they're not playing as much so maybe we want to speed that up right and then they can implement a new commander that maybe counters what is really popular at that time right so for example we saw uh, where is he Gilgamesh came into the game right and he's basically a direct counter to Zenobia right he has his blood craving debuff that makes enemies take damage when they heal instead of actually healing and this is an example of a brand new mechanic this this debuff had never existed before Gilgamesh came into the game and so the fact that the developers can kind of control the ebb and flow of fights and either speed things up or, th or slow things down based on who's who, who's the current meta I think that's cool and they can keep things fun and interesting and they can ensure that we never really end, in, end up into a scenario where things are just way too tanky right you just have way too many tanky commanders like rallies take forever or you have a scenario where things are just getting deleted super quickly you're able to pop flags pop forts way too fast then there's no competition right so power creep is just one tool that devs have to keep that in check and i think that that's a good thing but let's move on to some of the bad things okay 
Uh, and let's let's just take a look here at my herald okay right now i have an expertise herald and he is a part of my canyon lineup and i do have him as a preset army but in this current kvk i have not used him a single time uh and and that kind of is a bummer it's kind of a letdown because i mean of course i've put a lot of sculptures into him and in fact i even have a third infantry set that is sort of just rotting away on this commander because i never fought with three infantry in the open field for the duration for the entirety of this kvk and is harold really a bad commander i mean he's not like horrible right he's not a season one commander he's not trash and he's certainly he's better than epic commanders but like he's kind of been power crept at this point right my commander pairs for this kvk were a guan yu primary with a sargon secondary and i did a cpo primary with a Tarek secondary and that worked really well i really like that two combination lineup but no matter what i pair with my herald it doesn't feel like it even comes close to those two and that's really unfortunate that's even more so the case for people who invested in a commander like pakal that aren't rally leaders right if you're a rally leader and you you lead with infantry sure you still have use for pakal but for open field fighters i mean yeah you, you can get good value out of him for sure but i mean now that we have commanders like juga liang in the game it's even more easy to pop that infantry march than it ever has been before and suddenly it's not as tanky or as punishing as it once was and i think making this older content or in this case these older commanders obsolete isn't really a good thing for the game i mean don't even get me started on commanders that came out in season one or pre kvk one right i mean these commanders are unusable they're like even with the developers best efforts to make them decent with relics these commanders are just not usable you simply cannot use them there's no there's no reason to uh you'll never use them again after you first get them and i think that that feels bad it's essentially like punishing the players for investing so heavily into what they thought was good or, or new content at the time uh, and then you enter into season three or beyond of kvk and suddenly your edward is never going to be seen again and i think once players realize this one of the other bad things about it is that uh, they kind of feel like they don't want to participate in some of the current content because they're worried that if they invest a bunch of their sculptures into something that's new what if it gets obsolete with the next commander what if it gets obsolete with the next release right this is a risk that i've taken by investing in juga leong uh it's possible that when the next cavalry cycle comes around they could release a uh, you know nevsky prime and just blow juga leong out the water right it could be instantly deleted in the open field um because he is the first of his kind to shine silver and who knows or, or platinum i should say who knows if the next platinum commander is just going to be even just that much better than him right and and so players may be wondering like should i even bother and this causes players to hoard resources right and sometimes they will hoard resources to a fault sometimes players will hoard their resources for so long and they'll be so afraid to let those precious sculptures go that they get bored right they're not getting anything new they're worried about everything new that comes out is better than the last stuff they don't know what to do and eventually they get so bored they just quit they're like oh you know what i'm i'm just never gonna be able to keep up with this i'm just gonna not play the game and that's just not good right i mean for example obviously i'm saving gold gold sculptures but i am using them when i think that it's uh it's it's effective um but on top of that check out this right the museum look at how much currency i have up here there's so many things that i haven't unlocked yet uh and the reason for this is because i am worried that if i invest in the salad and relic for example i'm gonna spend precious currency that i'm not gonna be able to easily get back and later down the line what happens when they implement a guan yu relic or a, you know a ramses relic and all of a sudden uh, you need that commander uh, or that museum buff to be meta right it, you don't know how good the future relics could be so i'm just saving on top of that i've already begun saving some gold keys for the upcoming civilization we know that greece is coming into the game and with that is probably going to come an epic commander and a legendary commander in fact they've already said that that's the case and who knows i mean it's a gold key commander so it's probably not going to be very good but Thutmose most was interesting i mean he wasn't garbage he's like he's okay we just have better options but what if this new gold key commander is actually good right what if this is going to be the first good gold key commander as a way for lilith to give new players a way to sort of catch up to season of conquest what i'm trying to say is what if they give us one good gold key commander so that way new players have one good thing that they can work on 
in the early game that they can still use in the late game because right now with Yi Song Ye being sort of power crept out of the game a little bit with Juga Liang uh there really isn't any early game commanders that are worth investing in anymore and that was the beauty of Yi Song Ye is that you could get him 90 days into your kingdom and use him for the rest of the time playing you know I've been using Yi Song Ye for like four plus years now and he's been good the whole time this is one of the best investments I have ever made in my account uh and just now just yesterday did I put him on the bench and I still use him in Sunset Canyon and who knows I may actually build out a second Archer March just to get Isong back on the field because I do think that the circular AoE is still insane but you never really know right so I'm already hoarding my gold keys and I think what makes all of this feel bad is that we already know that this is for business purposes right we already know that the reason that Juga Leong is so much more powerful than previous commanders is because they want you to spin the wheel of fortune and in order to do this you have to spend gems in order to get enough gems to max spin the wheel typically you have to buy them unless you've been hoarding them forever okay uh and so we know that like power creep is an incentive for players to spend money that's why the zenith of power skins are some of the best city themes in the entire game because that is an event that causes players to spend four or five figures on this game in the span of just a couple of days and that is an insane generator of income for Lilith so it makes sense that they would continue to add newer and better city skins I mean back in the day uh, the Zenith of power skins were a, a solid 10 percent and now we see things like the Supreme Warrior where they give you a solid 15 percent right and so there's even power creep within the power creep right it eventually it starts to get out of hand but one thing is for certain it's that these are business decisions I mean why would uh I you know go all in on a Zenith of power if I already have a Zenith of power skin that is relatively good I mean I still have the Atlantis skin I love this skin it's one of the best skins I've ever gotten my hands on so right now now I don't really have a reason to to you know go for a Zenith but what if they release a city skin that gives me 20 percent cavalry defense like all of a sudden it's like oh my god that's so much better I might have to go for it and then I'll have to spend money and I don't think players really like systems like this that kind of force them almost in a way to spend money so that way they can keep up with the meta if you don't keep up eventually you're just bad and then your account sucks and then you stop playing and this brings me to the ugly uh and the ugly is that this isn't really sustainable in the long term I mean how many of you are familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh right when Yu-Gi-Oh first came out in the early 2000s it got really popular and arguably one of the best cards in the game was blue eyes white dragon and what did it do well it didn't do nothing it just had a big old number in the bottom corner which means that it was better than some of the other cards that you could have in your deck right it just bigger number equals better card why would i have 2850 attack if i could have 3000 attack they're both dragons and they both got eight stars i'm just gonna use the big boy i'm gonna use the boy with the bigger the bigger damage but thanks to power creep okay now we got cards like this that have a black border and he's got the same stats as our good old blue eyes white dragon here okay but you can get him on the field in a special way and you gotta have like a phd in, in the english language to read this little novella down here because he's got some sort of uh some sort of special effect okay and guess what Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is not as popular as it was back in 2002 2003 okay if you just look at sales figures alone Yu-Gi-Oh! used to be popping off and these days it's like impossible to even start playing because there's just it's unsustainable they're just writing paragraph after paragraph for card effect it's like I'm not gonna read all that bro and it's not just with characters alone there's also something called system bloat I actually don't know if anyone else uses that term I just made it up but I mentioned this before okay but in when, when rise of kingdoms first came out there was no equipment system okay the equipment system did not exist and of course the armament and formation system did not exist either crystal technology did not exist and also the museum did not exist these are all new systems that have been added into the game and how many systems is too many systems how many currencies are too many how many random drops are just it's just too many gambling mechanics this is a massive barrier to entry for new and returning players I mean if you just started rise of kingdoms today or if you haven't played in a year 
you're going to start playing and you know five minutes on YouTube and you're going to realize okay who are all these commanders that I don't even see in my game these are apparently the best commanders but I don't have access to them I can't get my hands on them I don't see them at all and as you dig a little bit deeper you start to realize oh my god there's so much stuff I have to work on I have to worry about commanders I have to worry about equipment iconic systems getting talents on the equipment and we have to talk about getting inscriptions armaments all this other stuff it's like okay so all the best stuff isn't even in the game at day one so effectively you have to wait nine months before you can get your hands on some of the new better commanders so what are you supposed to do play the game for nine months and not fight a single time not invest in a single commander for nine months or a year like no you're not gonna do that like it's just stupid to expect players to do that but on the other hand if they invest in something that they know is going to be power crypt out of the game they just feel stupid right they spend two hundred dollars on getting their hands on Minamoto only to realize that he's actually not that great and at least not as good as he used to be so like did you waste your money if you did you feel dumb about that right I mean don't even get me started on our boy Barca I still haven't purchased this dude and I've been playing for five years and again this feels really bad for players who maybe played for a year or two and then they quit for six months and then they come back and again there's a new set of commanders there's a new system that they have to worry about and figure out and understand there's new currencies involved with the museum system you don't really get and crystal tech is something that you have to worry about still and you have to buy it every single time you're in kvk like that's expensive and kind of stupid or you have to grind for it and i think again this is a really big barrier not only for just new players but players who are trying to return to the game they kind of just don't want to they're like oh my god like this is just it's not even the same game that they remember playing and all the progress that they made in the past is obsolete they're sitting there with their guan leo like oh wait a minute i this i can't use this anymore this isn't good anymore like all the investment all the time and money i spent into getting this commander is not good okay well i guess i'll just quit then and that's not even to touch on the fact that for some of the players who've stuck around the entire time sometimes it can get a little bit boring to have power creep in the game if the developers aren't creative enough with how they do it so if we look at juga leong uh on his third skill this is like kind of similar to Yi song a right i mean he has a 10 percent chance of increasing archer attack for up to 50 percent plus there's a little bit of extra stuff here so that's that's kind of cool but we see like a flat skill damage bonus here we see that flat skill damage bonus on multiple other commanders here in the game as well right so if what the developers do like if they're just going to essentially take the same thing and just implement it into another commander but make it better it's like it kind of gets boring right because it's like oh it's just the same thing but a bigger number right it's like it's the the trihorn dragon to the blue eyes white dragon example that i showed you earlier like okay cpo prime is basically just a better alexander the great they both share around shields you know they're infantry commanders they have a, a decent amount of march speed except cpo has like a you know an aoe with a health debuff like if the developers aren't creative with like new mechanics that add new power creep then it just kind of gets boring what's to say the next cavalry commander that comes into the game isn't just 2800 damage factor with a, a 20 percent troop defense reduction per stock which stacks up to four times and has 30 percent cavalry attack 30 percent cavalry defense and 30 percent cavalry march speed i mean like that's power creep in a nutshell and if that comes into the game it's kind of boring but you have to invest in it if you want to keep playing so in conclusion i think power creep isn't necessarily a bad thing there's a lot of ways that the developers can use it as a tool to balance the game give us new things to work on give us new toys to play with and make the game a little bit more fast paced more fun add more variety to the commanders but it's definitely something that i think the developers have to keep in check i think they're trying to keep it in check by giving season of conquest commanders to those that are in season three of kvk and also they you know for example took saladin they removed him from ideas governor and put him on the wheel of fortune so that way he's a little bit more easy to get your hands on right so they're doing things like you know maybe adding uh the commanders a little bit earlier into the daily special offer so that way you know new players can get their hands on some of these commanders a little bit easier right um and so you know i think the devs know this and they know that they have to work on the power creep problem but sometimes it just gets out of hand and i think you know with the armament system the formation system in general for me like this system is just so bad like i i hate i don't even like to update my armaments i don't even like like when i get new ones i don't even really look at what they do like i don't really care because like i have to scroll through all, you gotta you're telling me i gotta scroll through all these just to find what's the best horn 
right and how do i know if it's like oh well this one's got like half a percent more of this but it's got like two two percent of that and like oh but this one's got an inscription like oh it's so time consuming and i gotta do this for four different armaments for five different marches like bro no bro i'm not reading all this bro i'm not reading it all it's too much brother it's too much look at all this man i'm not go i'm not doing it i can't i just can't do it bro i'm just gonna slap some random stuff on there and just go i'm just gonna go fight and if i lose too much i'll quit that's it man anyway hopefully uh we don't see too much more power creep with the next set of commanders coming to the game hopefully for those of you like me who are investing in Druga Leong, they're going to get a good investment out of it and get, uh, you know, get him to stick around for a while. I think that would be best for everybody. But if uh, if you're worried about that, I would say maybe save some sculptures. Although if I were a betting man, I would say Druga Leong is going to be around for a while. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it entertaining or you just enjoyed this little rant session, drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of the Kingdoms players might see it. While you're down there, comment down below. Tell me what you think about Power Creep. Do you think it's gone too far in Rise of Kingdoms with commanders like Juga Leung? Or do you think that it's totally fine? It's the natural progression of the game. It's kind of inevitable and you're just along for the ride. I would love to hear from you guys down there. And while you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace.